In Solid Camp 2008, we've introduced a new f operation called face milling. This operation was built specifically for to allow you to mill the face of any top surface that we have, whether it be the top surface of a whole part or just a specific area. Let's take a look at how this works. We'll start by choosing our geometry. We go to define our geometry. You'll note that there's a boundary already around the entire box. We have here on the side either choosing from a model, faces, or profile. The default is model. Being that the default is already chosen and we already know our target, there's a boundary that's automatically created around the part. And this is enough for what I need to have to do right now. In my tool area, I will choose a tool that's a face mill. I'll take a 120 millimeter face mill as the part itself is 96 millimeters wide. In the levels, I'll choose my upper level at zero. My face depth, I'll leave that at zero. And now I'll go into my technology field. I have now the option of choosing either working in a hatch fashion as we can see in the picture here on the side or in a contour fashion working from the outside in in a contour fashion as we see in the picture or in this particular case since my tool is wide enough to cover the entire part I can do what they call one pass where one pass goes down the middle of the boundary completely milling the entire face of the part. In my data field, we have control of how much of the tool we want to pass over the entire part itself. We can either say by percentage of the tool or like 110% in this particular case, or we can put a value of the tool itself. In this particular case, I prefer using the percentage, and I'll say OK. If I were to do save and calculate now and show you my simulation, let's take a look at it from the top view. I'll do this one step at a time and you'll see my tool will go down to this area over here, which is 110% of the tool out of the part itself and have one pass over the part itself. Now this option was good when you had a tool that was wide enough to cover the entire part. But what happens when you have a part where the tool is not wide enough? For that, we'll load a different part. If we take a look at this part now, we can see first of all we have different faces that we want to uh, cover, whether it be individual faces or the entire part in a whole. And this now has to be done using a little bit of a different type of a pass. Let's take a look now at how this works with this particular type of part. If we were to go into our operation now and choose the face operation, we'll start by our geometry. And this time, instead of using the model option, which, in, which actually takes the entire part in itself, we'll use a different option. We can use what they call either face, and when I go by face, all I have to do is say define and choose any face that I want to use. For instance, I can choose this face, this face, and say this face over here. If I were to accept that, you'll note that it built one boundary around this entire area. This was what they called, they took all these faces and merged it to make one complete boundary. If I want, though, I can also make it into separate areas. Now we have a boundary for each one of these faces individually. Also if we like, we still also have the option of using the regular profile option. By using the regular profile option, all I do is go to define and then choose a profile the exact same way I've chosen profiles in the past, using the chain option for choosing a profile. And there I've in, uh, included the entire part using the profile option. In this particular case, though, I'd like to demonstrate the use of faces. I'll go back to faces and choose the geometry that I created in faces before. And as we see, we have our 
three faces. If I want, I can also give an offset to that geometry, say five millimeters, and I can say apply to all. You'll note that the geometry automatically grew by five millimeters around each one of these options. If I were to do merge, and then do apply to all, you note that it includes the entire boundary around this area. Okay, but I'd like to put it back though at zero, and we have the boundary around this area over here. And this is what I'd like to do for this particular demonstration. Now when I choose my tool, I'm going to use a tool, which is a simple end mill, of 16 millimeters. My levels, I'll say that my upper level is two millimeters, 2 millimeters above the part itself. My face depth is up until the floor itself. In other words, I'm going a total of 2 millimeters to take off the ex excess material on top. My step down, I'll leave at 2 millimeters as if I'm taking it all down in one shot. And in my technology field, before I go into my technology area, area over here, I'd like to just show this area over here. I'll say I want a floor offset of 0.2 millimeters. And I'll also say, let's do finish after I've cleared these 0.2 millimeters. Now let's go into our technology area. We have the option of hatch going back and forth, and we have the option of contour, going around, working our way in. Let's use the option of hatch. Now in hatch, we can go into our data field, and we have control of the angle that we want to work at. We also have control of the extension past the part, 110% or value, and we also have control of how much we want to go over the side of the part, as you can see in the picture over here. Now we also have control of our cutting direction. We can go either zigzag, back and forth, or one way, having the tool go one way, going back to the original side, and then going back again over the part itself. If we were to choose zigzag, back and forth, we also have the option of corner. We can say we want a sharp corner as it goes from one pass to the next, or we can have a fillet, having a fillet on the corner over here, making for a smoother transition between the tool passes. Let's use fillet. We just simply say OK and save and calculate. Now if we to look at our simulation, and we'll look at our simulation from our top view, we can see that the tool goes down, goes across that entire area, works its way around, and completely cleans that entire surface that we see. Now it's going back, because we said 0.2 millimeters, and now it's going down to zero and just going over the same surface. Now if I were to go back into my geometry area and go back into define, I like to change from separate, I like to change it into separate areas. So that my geometry now is just on each individual face itself. Now when I do save and calculate, and we simulate our operation, we can see that the tool goes down on one area, and does each individual face, instead of going the entire area back and forth over here. Both of these options are now available in SolidCam 2008. One more option we still do have in our technology area is also the contour option, working around the contour. And this is particularly important for when you're working on harder material, where you need to keep the constant um, contact with the part itself and also the cutting direction. If I were to go into my data area, you can see we work from the outside to the inside or from the inside to the outside. I work from the outside to the inside. We can see we can have fillets if we want on our edges, which is exactly what I want to have now. We can work either climb or conventional. And again, we also have the extension of our tool past the part itself. 
if I were to do OK, let's go into our link area now. In our link area, we have the option of going into the part using an arc. Let's use that option, do save and calculate, and let's take a look at the results. If we were to look at our simulation now, you'll note that the tool goes in on a radius and works in a contour fashion cleaning the entire face. It will do the same to the second and third faces as well.